Chapter 10, The Past Unfolded McQuinn Storm Aaron. The night was as dark as ever, but the stars littered the skies, adorning the evening's black blanket with blinking lights. I got up from the bed, carefully easing my left arm underneath Saul's head, and slipped myself off the bed to avoid waking her. I gazed at her face for a moment, and she reminded me of the good side of my life, one without complications, one where all that mattered was love. I fought the urge to go back and lie beside her. I had to be careful. She could destroy all that I had worked so hard for. My struggle to become the emperor was not an easy one. I had to rise from the ashes and make a name for myself. My clothes were gathered by the foot of the bed on the carpeted floors. I quickly scooped them up and put them on. I allowed myself a few more moments of peace with Saul, enough to reconnect with the beauty of her unmarred soul. As I summoned a cloud outside my chamber window, I shot one last look at her as she lay in my bed, her body a stark beauty enveloped by the darkness of my room. Enough, I told myself. And then, I went far away from her before I started remembering all that I had lost with her. I was still unsure if giving up on it was worth it. There are many success stories about a man's life. How a good one turns bad. How a bad person goes insane. How a soul conquers goodness. Or greatness. Because the truth is, the definition of success is relative. Some people are born downright evil. I knew of some, like Luca Arendela, who only had his mind set on owning the world through his riches. He did not mind if the laborers were unhappy because he knew that whatever happened, his peasant laborers would have no recourse to live but through the toils that he offered. But they are strong people, who despite the unfortunate events that came upon their lives, will never compromise their principles and easily refuse to see the world in a different light. Alas, I am not one of them. The moment that Luca slapped Papa, I realized that I could be so unforgiving, and that my heart was probably as tainted as the wine lords himself. It was the wrong emotion, I know, but it was also something that I could never rid myself of. I could never allow Luca to treat us like that. Remembering the incident made me angry once again, and the effect of my anger on the weather was not short of appalling. Sometimes I could be too strong, like now, as I rode a cloud, with the stars shying away from me. Marcella. Why did she ever leave us? When I was eight, I remembered her as a loving wife to father and a doting mother to me. Then one day, she went away. There were no words spoken between her and father, and from what I know, she never even bothered to reach out to us again. My heart constricted. I had no intentions of hating the noblewoman who gave birth to me. But sometimes, when someone is left behind by someone you trust, hate becomes an emotion you simply cannot escape. That damn Luca. I was unaware that he owned so many vineyards scattered all over Achaea. When I took his vineyard in Minoan, he went to Rudia, and when he had gathered enough treasures, he went to the Canellan Palace and sought an audience with Northsome. He asked Northsome to write off my name in Achaea's list of citizens, but he never succeeded. The audacity of that vile man. He said that I used my power to threaten and beat the air out of him. Well, the latter, I definitely did. If I had known that he would tell Emperor Northsome about what had happened, I would have killed Luca then and there. But Saul was there during my encounter with Luca, and I felt that she did not want me to harm him more than I already did. Her power was so beyond me. I had to fight the waves of calmness that steadily seeped through my gut that tried to suppress the storms within me. There were a few moments that proved Saul's allegiance to me, but there was one that stood out from the rest. I could still hear the voices and feel the wounds gnawing at my skin. The tension and fear from the day when a group of soldiers came to Minoan for my arrest are still a fresh memory. McQuinn Storm Aaron? A soldier asked the laborers. One of the great pickers pointed to my cottage. From where father was sitting, he stood and greeted them. Why are you looking for him, sir? He asked politely. His Grace, the Lord Emperor, Northsome of the Two Moons, sent us to take McQuinn Storm Aaron with us based on a complaint raised by one Luca Arendela, the soldier said stoically. Father was taken aback. Wind is not here. This order came from the emperor himself. There is another charge against him that is so vile that it makes my stomach turn. He is wanted for the death of innocent people, 
old people, children, almost a hundred citizens, in a storm that he created in a mare. Father's mouth opened, but no words came out. He knew I had been to a mare, but he did not know the whole story. I had only told Saul. I was shaken to my core and could not bring myself to repeat the story to anyone else. A hundred citizens for whom I was accountable? Was it really that many? I shivered. From where I was hiding, I saw Father as he gave way for the soldiers to enter the cottage. He found me behind the door, and before I could react, Father punched me in the face, my jaw almost unlocking from its hinges. I held my face, shocked at what happened, as the group of soldiers entered the cottage. What did you do to your mother? Father bellowed in an accusing tone. Did you kill her in the flood that you created? Did you strike lightning at the Amerisian palace? Did you kill the person who loved you the most in this world? Loved you so much that she left me behind. He was raging, and for the first time in my life, I grew afraid of him. The cottage shook as though there was an earthquake. In the intensity of Papa's emotions, he managed to uproot the cottage's post by drying up the land outside our home. Some soldiers had to balance themselves as the ground shook. When the shaking stopped, I was shocked into silence. You will never know the true meaning of love because in your heart, there is always a storm building up, and you are not strong enough to control it. I swear by the gods if I find out that you raised your hand on your mother, I will end your life with my own bare hands. His voice was trembling and thick, and his blue eyes made him stand out from the dimness of the kitchen. He had always been so kind that I could not believe that the eyes glaring at me right then belonged to Father. Oh, dear gods! Take him, he ordered. When none of the soldiers moved, he shouted, Take him. I was still sitting on the floor when the soldiers surrounded me. For such a thin man, my father had thrown such a strong punch, both with his fist and with words, hitting me straight in the gut. I was weakened and had no strength to pull myself up. Marcella left us because she loves, loved, me? I would never believe it. Surely father had gone crazy with all his loneliness from losing her that he made no sense to me now. I was still rubbing my jaw when one soldier gestured to two of his men to bring me to my feet. I was still in a daze. Father, tell me you don't mean what you said. Please don't send me away. He looked at me, his eyes moistened. Forgive me, son, but your powers grow stronger every day, and I don't know how I could still be of any assistance to you. I pray that the Emperor has enough charisma to turn you into a better man. He moved closer and held my face in his hands. My eyes stung. He kissed me on both cheeks. May Akia heal you. Then the soldiers dragged me outside. Father, no. It was only one time, the storm. You see, I didn't mean to. I'll calm down, I will not lose control anymore. Don't let them take me. It's with you that I want to spend my days. Your ambition is getting the better of you, my son. Learn from the emperor. And come back to me again with your mother. To become a family again. I went to see mother. I wanted to bring her home, but she didn't. How do you expect her to come to us? Through the floodwaters that you caused? Love is never supposed to be forced. It is earned, father paused, clutching at his heart. His brows creased, his breathing coming out in intermittent gasps. Why do I have to force her to love us, Father? We are her family. I don't need to earn her love. I bellowed in anger. Father murmured something, but I barely heard him because the thunder inside my head had started, and darkness veiled my eyes. I almost did not see the anguish, the tears that rolled down Father's cheeks as he said those last words. But it was all too late. My eyes were already burning while my heart throbbed endlessly. My blood coursed through my veins with such an intensity I had never felt before, and right in front of me, the air and clouds kissed the ground and rotated speedily, sending spiraling wind across the land. It grew bigger, taking in its vast swirl anything that it touched. I had created a tornado. Some of the soldiers ran away, while others were unlucky enough to be pulled into it. I let go of the tornado, and it vanished throwing all that it had gathered flying across the vineyard. One soldier had his sword raised at me, but before he could swing at me, 
I pushed him back with a forceful gale. His body slammed against the ground, and he was left unconscious. I looked around, my eyes still veiled with hatred, only this time, I had better control. The uncertainty and pain clutched at my being gave me the strength to extend my arms upwards to bring forth the storm clouds. I will destroy everything on this land, I vowed to myself. Torrential rains poured, and I called upon the heavens for lightning. The soldier I had knocked down had regained consciousness, picked up his sword, and threw it at me. I moved to the right, but it was too late for me already, as the broad side of the sword slapped me across my back. I fell to the ground, screaming in agony. The pain, however, immediately dissolved and was replaced by a wave of even angrier emotions. The blade that hit my back took me by surprise, breaking my concentration and losing control. From above, storm clouds disappeared as fast as I had summoned them. And soon, the sky was clear once more, but the evidence of what I had done left an impression that ensured I would be sent to the canal and dungeons. The soldiers approached me with their calculated steps. All swords were drawn out. I closed my eyes and knew there was no penance for what I did. No. It was a beautiful sound. High-pitched, and yet soothing and calm. Take me with you. I'm the only one who can appease him. Check the Akeen registry. My power is calmness, Saul said. It was a wonder how she managed to stay calm after all of this madness. Her power never ceased to amaze me. Forgive us, my lady. This young man is dangerous. Anyone will only find death beside him, one of the older soldiers said. Don't you know who I am? Saul asked icily. The soldier regarded her carefully, studying her face. But his eyes held no recognition of who she was. I'm sorry, but I have no idea who you are. Saul's eyes squinted, and her jaw hardened, but surprisingly, she did not argue. Instead, in one swift movement, she walked towards the man and held his face tenderly. How I envied the soldier at that moment because I knew what he must have been feeling as serenity coursed through his whole body. The soldier's countenance changed. When Saul was done, she moved away from him and started towards me. She smiled at me sadly before taking my face in her hands. My dear heart, please try to control it, she said. Her words, with the energy that she passed on to me, brought me to a wonderful place, one where everything sang of delightful melodies. And I was unable to help it. I smiled at her, too, regardless of the wound that throbbed at my back. The soldiers were rooted to their spots. They must have been as fascinated with her power as I always was. I looked around for my father, hoping he had stayed so I could ask for his forgiveness. If I were to spend moon turns in the dungeons, I would have to make amends with my father. But he was nowhere in sight. Amaya, please help Wind. He is in serious need of your healing, Saul said. Amaya came running towards me. I did not know why she would still want to tend to me after seeing what I had done. Yet, she came to me because healing was her power and her great passion. I had Amaya for my wounds and Saul for my soul. What more could a man ask for? While two of the soldiers hauled me towards Amaya, Saul approached one of the soldiers who looked to be the group leader. She knelt in front of him. By the power vested in you by the Emperor, I, Solarin Douglas, vow to serve him always, in exchange for McQuinn Stormaren's life. To atone for whatever transgressions he has committed today, she paused as though searching for the right words to make the fealty stronger. He will need me. And as you have seen, I'm the only one who can calm him. Take me with you, and I will serve the Emperor of Achaea for all the moon turns that I will still live. But let this be a seal between His Royal Highness and me, that McQuinn Stormaren will not see death. The soldier hesitated. There were three stars on his closed lapel, indicating that he was a man of high position in the palace. Before I could do anything, I saw the soldier cut open the flesh in his palm. Blood dripped out. Saul raised her hands, palms up. The soldier cut Saul's palm too, and when they were both bleeding, they clasped each other's hands. To seal the allegiance with blood is to vow one's life is committed to a higher purpose, His Royal Highness to Solarin Douglas. Solarin Douglas to Achaea. The vow reigns true and will hold for as long as Achaea stands, the soldier said. 
Saul repeated the oath, and it rang in my ears. I was weary, and hence, I was unable to protest, but I wondered if I had some strength left, would I have asked Saul to retract her vow to save my life? It did well for my honor that I had never gotten the chance to find out. It still pains me to remember that day, that very moment that Saul gave up her life for me, for love. By doing so, she lived up to the promise she once gave me that she would never leave my side. Because had she not done that, I would have faced the gallows, ready for hanging. Or the dungeons to be held captive for generations on end. I am unaware if her intense love drove me away from her or if it was what kept pulling at me each time I saw her, even after all these moon turns. This is why I cannot fail as an emperor, even if it means destroying parts of Achaea. I will never let her sacrifice go to waste.